What's good, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of Pro and Bro Wrestling Podcast. We are your hosts. I'm Arnold Telegaarda. And I'm Mr. No Days Off, Fred Rosser. And this is a very, very special Zoom episode of Pro and Bro Wrestling, episode 45. Our fourth guest, you know, uh, our first two Zoom episodes were, were just you and I, Arnold. Yeah. Uh, the third guest was uh, my keto coach, Nat Ho. And now today, time is money, so I don't want to take too much of his time. My main man, Kalisto from WWE, is in the house. The Lucha House Party is in the house on Pro Pro Lucha, Wrestling. Lucha, 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 Lucha. <laughs> wow, so, man. Thank you for joining us, Kalisto. I appreciate it, bro. Hey, man. I'm always, always honored to be on your show. So it's awesome. So cool. I've been waiting for you to ask me. <laughs> yes, yes. How are things with you, man? How's the quarantine life? I know you're, you're staying busy. Uh, I have to tell you, man, I, I feel like I am your day one-ish because as soon as you launched the Lucha family, I subscribed yeah. to it, man. Ah. I mean, I, I got to be honest, so like, I can't understand half of it because sometimes you speak in Spanish, you know, but I, I love all the videos of you like training with Sasha or making oh, your yeah. own micheladas, man. Micheladas. Like, micheladas, oh. Man, they're bomb. They're so good. Now we're like masters of it. I know. <laughs> so. I know. That's bomb. And you also made your hand sanitizers, man. You're, you're yeah, like, having good there you go. So, like, I'm, I'm just trying to stay busy and uh, I'm trying to connect with both audiences, Latinos and uh, the people that don't understand Spanish. Yeah. Um, I'm just trying to, you know, create something and uh, just, you know, hey, get people thoughts away from what's going on around the world, you know, because it's tough. But at the same time, um, it's really create creativity that we're doing and you know actually we want to be creative and have fun yeah and also we've been working so hard especially uh, my wife abby yeah she came out with uh, her company it's called candela and okay. it's the first uh uh cbd nutrition and wellness and health so wow. we just announced it and more information coming soon so you can follow yeah. them at candela.com so yeah. Yeah. So more information coming coming soon. So we've been keeping busy and and also been working out a lot now. Yeah, so that's good. I mean, it looks like it, man. You're making good. That's right, man. <laughs> and also, it's, it's, it's also cool there, because <laughs> it's also cool because you're you know in a way creating your own brand. You know. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And it's very important to uh, to expand. You know. And and also, I'm learning so much. Mm. And not only with. Uh, uh, in general stuff and, and with and with wrestling too because I, I learn every day too new stuff and right I, I love learning anything that's new and now yeah. with this company like it's just so much that I'm learning and like I said more information coming soon I don't want to give away too much <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah I'm excited see. about it I'm really excited yeah. about it and Kalisto Abby's on her what third uh third degree third master's I know, right? Oh, she's working actually. She's actually she wants to get her doctors. Wow. So now, yeah, she has two masters, and now she's her focus is on this company right now. Mm. And yeah, she's been working so much, and and plus she's on top of the Lucha Family videos, and she's yes. a she's an editor and producer. I'm like, man, what can you do? <laughs> That's so, no joke, man. I'm because... very lucky. I'm that itself like, is almost it's a full-time job because i've been i've been doing yeah. YouTube, uh besides this podcast i'm a full-time youtuber i've been doing youtube for like almost six years now full-time and you know thinking of yeah. thumbnails edited like editing like a ske upload schedule it's it's, it's almost tough, like a nine to five man. man it's a new yeah that's what i'm saying like i'm learning a lot too even with youtube and yeah. just using zoom too i've never yeah. used it. Uh, I'm learning so much, and it's exciting too. So I want to see what else is new. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know? uh, Kalisto, yeah. it's it's crazy, man. I know before this whole quarantine lockdown thing happened, you've been uh, sidelined before that. Yeah. And what's I'm okay? So I met you at Bakersfield backstage, but mm -hmm. the day that you got injured, I was at the arena um, watching oh, the show at the house show. Okay. I was there. Nice. And it was on, in Ontario. <laughs> And you yeah. guys are wrestling the revivals, right? Lucha House Party, yes. the revivals. And I swear, man, from where I was sitting, I it felt, I was telling Fred this, we talked about it. I, it felt like yeah. it happened out of nowhere because it happened so fast. I was, yep. I was watching the match and all of a sudden it was like, ding, 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 one, two, three. And I was like, wait, what just happened? What's, yep. And I, th I think you guys were supposed to go over because they played your guys' music. And, you know, revive, um, I forgot what Scott Dawson, Scott Dawson or Dash, like, 
you know, yeah. he'll move, took the, took the mic, no, no, play the wrong music, hit our music. But yeah, yeah can you, can they, you just tell really what well. happened with me? Um, so uh, we, we, had, we were having a fun weekend. It was a final match. Uh, usually when we have the final match, we all, we go all out. We just have fun. Yeah. And it's very exciting. So I don't know what just happened, but throughout the match, uh, I was, I did a cross body and I guess I got thrown and like so fast and I just landed on my shoulder. It's just like, it went like, it was like a shock of pain. Wow. I tried getting up. I'm like, Oh no, something's wrong. I'm like, Oh, yeah. something's wrong. And I tried kicking, um, Scott Dawson. And I kicked him, but then I tried getting up. I'm like, oh, no, something's wrong. I'm like, oh, something's wrong. So the, that feeling when you know it's like something's wrong, like, you know what, yeah, I can't, I can't keep going because yeah. I, I, I don't, I don't want to make it worse because when I, I actually did a drop kick and I landed on the same shoulder. Oh, wow. So oh, my shoulder was, that was in pain, and, and I just knew something was wrong because, like, my whole arm just went numb. I'm like, oh, great. And then a big shock of pain and then numbness and then more pain. I'm like, oh, great. And I, and I just knew and I felt my shoulder separated. So from there, we go in the back and I'm like, I'm just like, oh, great. I, I, I just got back in shape. I'm, I feel good in the ring. This right. is great. And then just something small, it just took me out. And I'm like, man, you know how it is? Just like something that you done every day that you do, just something. It was a crossbody. Right, right, and right. I just landed the wrong way, and just yes. oh, man, just something small like that. Us as wrestlers, we we know, we know the deal. We know how it is, man. Because we can do a whole the crazy stuff that we do, like the big bumps off the ladders or something. In the craziness that I do, yeah. this little thing put me out. So it's like, oh man, you know, it did. I mean. It was very painful inside and out. Yeah. Um, I was, uh, of course, depression came in. Uh, stress came in. Uh, I'm like, man, what am I going to do? Like, because I have so many plans. I was planning when I got home to fix up my gym. And, like, now I, everything's on hold. Yeah. So I was in a, like, in a little sleep for a while. They told me I didn't need surgery. So okay. that's good. And I double checked with myself too. I do not need surgery. So that was good. Um, Cause surgery is the last thing I want in my mind. Right. You know, cause it would have been a longer recovery. Right. So, and, and I just told him, you know what? Like I'm, I'm going to take my time to come back because from there, like I, I know how it is coming back early. Yeah. So I've done that myself and it's very painful. But at the same time, because you're passionate about it and you love the sport so much, yeah. You, and you, when you watch it, right, you're like, oh man, you just want to go in there. Oh man, I'm just, yeah. you know, I just feel it. I can yeah. be in there, like, oh, it's hurtful too because in a way I'm torturing myself. And then I had to like click the channel. I'm like, you know what? Let me get my mind straight. Let me focus on myself. Let me think about myself. Let me. I haven't done that in a while. I'm like, man. Um, like, what am I going to do? Uh, so my focus right now is helping uh, Abby with with uh, Candela.com. Yeah. And um, but she's doing great, man. Right now, like the plans and everything, just just finding just stuff, our products and stuff. It's just so many, so much stuff to do. Yeah. <laughs> Put it that way. Like, I don't want to say too much, but yeah, it's very exciting. But and then that kept me busy. Mm -hmm. um, I took my time, very long time. Uh, trying to build my gym, my little stuff that I have, and actually clean my house because I, <laughs> it takes time and like when we're in and out, we, you know, we just want to be home and just chill. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So now, it, it, I got time to actually uh, fix up my studio. Now I have a room that's like a studio, and I have my gym on the side. And if I'm bored, hey, let me get a second workout. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna get a third workout today. So, if, you know, and if the sun is nice and now, I'm just yeah. getting my Speedos. All right, let me tan. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, they always say the hardest part about the gym is actually going to the gym. So, it's so convenient that it's inside your house, you know. You get, you have yeah, no I kind of like it. I, I started, I start liking it now. Yeah. Like, it, like I, don't, I don't need to go tan. I could just go outside yeah. in my backyard. Um, I have what I need. 
my, in my garage. Now it's fixed up. I got to clean a little bit more. Right. Uh, add a few mats here and there. But yeah, um, yeah I, I have what I need. And it's just like, man, like, I don't need to go out. But sometimes you do get like, all right, well, let me go on a bike ride. <laughs> let me go. <laughs> let, me, let me go on my little scooter or something. Yeah. Um, I, I love, love, love waking up in the morning and just watering my plants. Wow. It feels so very therapeutic. Okay. For me, uh, my mom, for a long time, she worked uh, uh, watering plants in big buildings. So wow. she, like downtown Chicago, and she did all that. She went on the north side, yeah. south side. So she did that all over. So she watered the plants. Okay. And uh, a couple of times I went to work with my mom. Long story short, she's like, oh, you need to talk to them. You need, they feel your vibration. They feel your pain. They feel when you're happy. They feel when you're sad. Yeah, and I tried it. I was telling my mom this uh, the other day. Like I'm talking to my roses, my my little pink roses that sometimes it comes out, sometimes it doesn't. When I feel like I feel stressed, when I feel like bad, it might sound like boring, but I I talk to my flowers. Yeah, and I when I feel like something's wrong or something, I I just talk to them, and when I'm watering them the next day, oh my god, they look beautiful. It's like, man. So to me, it feels like it's working, you know? Absolutely. And it's very therapeutic, too, because uh, I, like, I like taking all my dogs to walks, and I just yeah. like every morning watering my plants. That's a real and I have a little cactus, so <laughs> that, too. That's beautiful, man. And that's so real because I, I can take it back to when I was in fourth grade and I actually had a science project where my teacher said the same thing. If you, there's, we had two plants. One plant, like we just leave it out on the shelf, don't talk to it. And the other plant, every day, you're just like, hey, how's it going? You know, and sure enough, the other plant thrives more. So it's, it's facts, man. Like the more oh, yeah. you put into it, the more that it's going to thrive. Oh, yeah. If, if, not, if it's not that, I'm playing guitar. Oh, wow. Or I'm working out. <laughs> I mean, you can't, get, you can't get bored. There's so many things for you to do. Yeah. So, like, I, I'm trying to be as much creative as possible or, Oh, uh, Abby wakes up and she tells me, hey, uh, what do you want to cook for me today, this morning? I'm like, oh, what do you want? <laughs> like, what do you want? Uh, make me an uh, omelet quesadilla. I'm like, oh, all right, cool. I look it up and uh, she helps me here and there. I'm like, all right, cool. There you go. Start. And I just do it live right there. I'm like, hey, all right. Well, well he records me. But yeah, yeah, this and that. And then once the final product is done and the video is done, I'm like, all right, babe, how was it? <laughs> it, needed, it needed a little salt. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm so, <laughs> so, yeah, it's fun. That's it's fun. great, man. Arnold, Arnold, uh, Cleso's got me almost on the verge of tears because, I, you know, it's crazy. I'm, I'm fanboying right here. This is my boy right here. You know, mm -hmm. we, we've seen it all. We've done it all. This is my boy right here. And just for him yeah. to be on the podcast sharing his story, I said to him yesterday, don't die with the story and you tell it. So for me, this podcast is very therapeutic for me. Uh, nice. Kalisto, your journey started in 2006. Yes, it did. And like, how supportive was your family? How supportive was your inner circle? Uh, can you take us on that journey of coming, coming from Chicago, uh, mm -hmm. starting from the bottom, now you're here? All right. So let me see. There's no time limit, right? No. Mm -hmm. Okay, oh, cool. Because <laughs> this is a long story. Here. Not at all, man. So, uh, all, all right. You, all right. Um, I'm o it all started like when I I've always been a fan. Me growing up, um, I had no connections, no friends that like wrestling. I mean, believe me or not, like if I, if, if I knew you, we were, let's just say we went to high school, you did backyard wrestling, I would love it. I would yes. go every, every day in your backyard and do wrestling. Yes. I, the thing is that I didn't know anybody. And Sometimes in the backyard, uh, when there was like big snow, I used to like throw myself around this and that because I really wanted to wrestle. So one day in college, uh, I'm doing this paper and I'm stressing out. I'm like, man, I just need something new. Like I need, like I can't be sitting down typing here. Like, man, that's just not for me. Like, man, like I just feel like I need to do something. So before that, I had like, three or four jobs. I had my own cell phone. My dad's things always like, oh yeah, you can, you can have anything you want. You just go get a job and buy it. Like, oh, all right. <laughs> so that, it started from there. So all that, me thinking stress, I mean, you know what? I need to find something. 
and I found something online, just me looking up. It was Harley Race and Windy City Pro Wrestling. I'm like, man, Harley Race? That's too far. Like, I can't go over there. I'm like, man, how am I going to do it? I called, actually. I don't even know who answered, but I called for information. And, um, yeah, they just said, like, for me to drive down there. And I'm like, man, it's just a long drive so the whole time. I need to find something closer. So I found Windy City Pro Wrestling. And I looked it up, and I researched how to get there. So I took me, I was downtown Chicago, Robert Morris College, and it took me two trains and two buses to get there. So, it, like, I was going to school and working at the same time and working out. I've, I've always been, I, w- I was always home, like, 11 p.m. because I always wanted to be busy. So I got there, and it was, like, uh, 20. $300 fee to start. And I'm like, man. So I started working a lot. And I'm like, man, I don't have enough money. So let me, let me save up. And I worked and I worked and I worked. I had many jobs. I did construction. I did uh, security. I was security for Daddy Yankee's concert. Wow. That was, that was a, a cool one that I did. Um, yeah, man, I, I worked long hours. And I think like maybe not too long can't remember but it took me a while to save up so I did and I went over there I contacted them and everything and they got me set up here's the payment I'm like man now I'm broke (laughs) I got nothing (laughs) so I I asked my parents hey can you help me out for like just for the trains and stuff and the buses because I have nothing um so yeah here and there they, they did help me out my parents they didn't like me wrestling they didn't they wanted me to be like, uh, like a doctor or a baseball player or something that doesn't hurt me. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, oh, come on, but I just want to try it. So I dedicated myself to be there every weekend. Every weekend, and then started being weekdays. Uh, I was there for two weeks. And then for those two weeks, they, uh, they were telling me, hey, uh, how long have you been wrestling? I'm like, oh, what do you mean? Yeah, you, you've been uh, you've been wrestling for a couple a uh, couple years. I'm like, no, this is my first two weeks, man. <laughs> like, why? Like, because I was picking it up so much, and I I watched a lot of wrestling. And there was this lucha guy. He did um, like a clown character in AAA, like in the '90s. Okay. And now he was living in Chicago. He was looking for a place to train, mm-hmm. and um, so I met him there. And I'm like, and I was telling my friend, hey. I want to do that. They were doing head scissors, wheelbarrow, arm drags, you know, uh, basic stuff. And I'm like, to me, it was like, oh my God, I want to learn that. And that school, they were so strict. I couldn't have my match in within one year because you have to start from the bottom. You have to pay your dues and all this stuff. So secretly after training, if, when everybody left, my friend, he's like, all right, hey, hey, I told the guy that, that you're interested and you're going to practice, just practice. So now I practice and then practice secretly, even though I wasn't supposed to. And the Mexican guy, my friend, uh, that I learned Lucha Libre with, he's like, hey, uh, we trained, uh, he's like, we trained Tuesdays and Thursdays. I'm like, oh, that's perfect because here the class is Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So I was going Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, American wrestling. Tuesdays and Thursdays, Lucha Libre. Completely different world. Uh, Arm drag, arm drag, two different sides and two different names. You know how it is. It's just like very confusing because when I was doing American matches, uh, when they say, for example, suplex, suplex, oh, oh, uh, American, oh, uh, suplex, oh, wait, arm drag, something. And it just threw me off, but... I'm glad it happened because it, it put me under pressure and I was pressuring myself like, no, American, American, no, Lucha Libre, Lucha Libre, no. Um, so yeah, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> so no, in that company, in, in that company, Windy City Pro Wrestling, I had my first match within the first three weeks, two and a half weeks. I was really nervous. It was a tag team match and uh, I forgot a spot <laughs> and I'm like, oh man. Oh, no. And then they just started beating me up and doing head scissors, wheelbarrow, springboard cross bodies. Boom. Because um, I love the fact that a trainer tells me, hey, Manny, do you think you can try this? I've never tried it, but I think I've seen it. Yeah. Boom, 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 boom. Hey, you think you can try this? 
You, you think you can try that? And that just reminds me, same thing, how Norman Smiley was with me at the performance center. Mm -hmm. Hey, Manny, you think you can try this? You think I love that? Yeah. Because even if, if, if I haven't tried it, deep down, I know I can do it. Yeah. So, and it started from there. It started from there. Um, it was really hard because I, I knew any, I didn't know anybody. And I stayed in Chicago for like five years. And then I started traveling. So from there, it was everything on my own. Like I had no help from, from anybody. I didn't know how to make connections. Uh, I tried to find ways on how to go to practice. Uh, I was really upset when I couldn't go to practice, the days I couldn't go because of work. Um, yeah, man, I mean, I just went through a lot. Just my parents didn't really see it as a, like a serious thing. Yeah. So I kind of took it like, eh, I'm going to make it like a hobby. So, but then uh, there was this opportunity in Mexico, 2009, December. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh man, I, I kind of want to go. I've never wrestled in Mexico. Right. That's my, my dream to actually wrestle in Mexico. Because throughout those five years, uh, I traveled maybe once or twice with Lucha Baboom. And in New York, this company that was called East Coast Lucha Libre. Okay. So I did those shows because of my friend, Michael Paris, uh, Zima Ion, or now in WWE. Um, but yeah, he was, uh, yeah he, he was my hookup. He was, he's my good friend. And because of him, I started traveling and then, then went to Mexico. But before I went to Mexico in 2009, my very first time, I broke my leg. Ah. Uh. Goodness. So there was my first major stop from actually me succeeding. And yeah. I'm like, man, I was so depressed. I even cried. I'm like, man, what am I going to do? Throughout this time, I already met Abby. So okay. she supported me. I, uh, I was six months in, and then I met her. Mm. So she supported me so much. Then my parents did, but not as not so much like my wife. Sure. so she was like my major support and she still is my major support um and and it sucked because i was so excited and i already had plans and they already uh i think they did like lucha news coverage i was on radio and magazines that they were i was announced that i was gonna go there i'm like oh man they're making a big deal that's cool but then I broke my leg, so everything got postponed. I bought the tickets to go to Mexico. And the next day, actually, uh, after my surgery, I told my wife, like, hey, let's go to Mexico. Like, no matter what, I don't care. I still want to go. I want to see my family I haven't seen in 10 years at that time. Um, so we went. We went to her land, which is uh, Jalpa, Zacatecas, and to my land, Mexico City, Mexico. So we went to both sides, but I was in crutches the whole time. And I'm like, man, we still here, but that's cool, we're trying some food. But I didn't let anything stop me. I'm like, you know what? We're still gonna go and enjoy ourselves. There you, you go. Because yeah, I, I'm not gonna sit home and just be depressed and be sad. And I wanna do something about it. But it did, it did took me some time too, to actually like, man, like, all right, let me refocus this and that. Doctors told me I was gonna, uh, I'll be good within a year. <laughs> My hard hit in this, I came back in six months. Wow. Because you put in the work. <laughs> I came work. back in six months. And of course, I was in pain. I feel the metal plate and five screws that I got yeah. in my left tibia. It wasn't my ankle. It was my tibia bone. Actually, it broke in a spiral going up. So they told me it was a clean break. Yikes. So, man, yeah, dude, I, I was just so, so, like, depressed. But then, like I said, me going out of Mexico, maybe it'll change me. And it did. Uh, so that's why I came back early, six months early, and then I started wrestling again. Uh, then I started traveling uh, uh, around the U.S. And then from there, I got another opportunity to go to Mexico. So I went, and I'm like, I'm super careful my last days. I'm like, I don't want to <laughs> mess up, this and that. So I go to Mexico. Same thing. They made a huge deal, this and that. I'm like, wow. So I started making noise. I was making big noise. And there was this huge event. Uh, I think it was called Expo Lucha. They do huge shows. And then they have AAA. It's like the WWE in Mexico. Right, right. 
put it that way. So uh, I ended up uh, going there and just wrestling there and just seeing the atmosphere and everything, man, it was amazing. It was real, real cool. So I'm glad I got to do that. And while my wife left, I stayed. And I was going to Mexico back and forth, put it that way. The last one I did was Lucha Expo. Um, then I had an event called DTU Erotica. It was like, it's like a, a hardcore version, but with um, entertainment. Okay. So put it that way. Um, so yeah, I was there. I did the match. There goes another accident. Oh That's, no! Boom! There's a major stop again. That was back in 2011. Uh, this time I came actually close to death. Put it that way. Wow! You can see you can see the video on oh, Samurai. Is this when you did the like you yep. did the flip and your head hit the rail or something? Yeah, like that? it hit. Yeah, the rail saved my life because if I would have hit the concrete floor, I would just flat. I did see that. Like my brain, that. my whole. So that stopped my momentum, and doctors were telling me over there, "Hey, good thing you you work out a lot of back because you stopped your momentum." I'm like, "Wow, you see? That's why I do a lot of pull-ups, man." <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, and uh, it was tough because I got kicked out of three hospitals over there. Wow. I was just supposed to be there for the weekend. I ended up staying in Mexico for two and a half months. And it was really tough. I, I felt like being drunk day and night. Mm -hmm. I couldn't go to the bathroom. I couldn't eat. Wow. I was staying at my aunt's house. Thank, thank God I have a lot of family in Mexico. Um, from there, it was tough because I was by myself and I had like a neck brace. I had, I had like a little bell that my aunt made me and like, she made it. And I'm like, wow, that's pretty cool. Um, it just felt embarrassing because like I haven't seen my family that long and and then they have to undress me, help me shower. And I'm like, oh man, I haven't seen you since I was a kid and now you're showering me. I'm like, oh. <laughs> so yeah, and, um, I got to meet a lot of family in Mexico because of that. And a lot, of, uh, most of them, passed away now a couple of my uncles and aunts uh but i got to meet them and i got to live you know with them and it, it was it was it was like a kind of good thing it happened because i got to meet them and got to you know, talk to them and everything yeah in a way but then i go back to chicago because they didn't let me fly back to home because my brain was really swollen and i was diagnosed with a post-concussion syndrome so from there, uh, yeah, I went back. My mom and my dad, obviously really nervous and scared. I was nervous and scared for them because my, my dad's a diabetic. My mom has high blood pressure and I just didn't want to worry them. I didn't want nobody to know, not even Abby, because she's in our, she, at the time she was alone at the apartment. I'm like, man, so, and I was working, I was doing, I was a life skills instructor for the mentally disabled. Mm. So I was doing that. So I was a life skills instructor in after school program. So I had jobs. I had many jobs and everything just came to stop. So I was worried about that because I got fired. And I'm like, what am I going to do? But I came back home. It, hey, let me, uh, let me just see my family. Let me just feel better and get this stress out. So I was getting homesick too. So I was happy to see my family, my parents. They didn't seem worried, but my mom was really eager. Hey, hey, no, just go to the, go to Cook County and just get checked again, because I'm not sure. I want you to really, really get checked and get x-rays on your brain and all this stuff. Like just get all the tests, whatever. And she went with me. I'm like, all right, cool. Um, yeah, I had to say, because I was still in pain, because I just tell them, like, hey, my pain's, like, really over the top, so they can get me quicker, because it's like a 10-hour, 12-hour wait. Mm. So my mom goes with me, and she, she says, I'll wait. I'm like, oh, like, whatever. But So then uh, my mom calls me from the phone, and she's, like, maybe four doors next to me. And I'm like, oh, why did you get admitted? Like, oh, no, I'm just getting a checkup. So my sister calls me, my brother too. I'm like, hey, mom had a heart attack, this and that. I'm like, what? Wow. So she, she didn't want to tell me. 
So in order in order to get in the hospital quicker, some you need to be closer to death. That that's how I was at the time, man. But it's like it was tough. It was like a double whammy, man. And I was like, oh great, you know what? I ain't gonna wrestle no more. Like I'm done. Like I am done. That's it. Uh, it was too much for me to handle. It was too much pressure. Um, too much, like, hurtfulness to see my family go through that. And, you know, seeing Abby going through everything, just holding everything inside. So uh, I had another expo lucha that I was supposed to go because I was excited and I was thinking of coming back, but I didn't expect my mom had to have a heart attack. So that that made me like, you know what? Forget this. But I told myself, I'm just going to get better and go to this Lucha Expo that I'm booked and, they, and I already have tickets bought for. Um, I go down there to go down there and just be ready. So my first match back was against uh, El Generico, now Sami Zayn. Yeah. That was my first match back. Wow. And I'm glad I got to wrestle him because yeah, I've always wanted to wrestle him. I heard a buzz, this and that, so he was real good. And I seen his stuff. So I had a lot of fun with him too. So I had my big bags ready to go to Mexico. My wife just finished her associates at the time. Okay. And she's like, hey, I, I'm, I'm done. If I'm going to go to Mexico with you. I'll stay with you if anything happens, no matter what. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, I'm just going to do that show. I'm going to sell every single mask, every part of gear, everything that I own there. Because you can sell everything. It's an all-day selling merch from 8 a.m. to midnight. So I'm sure you can sell something. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I went there. I landed in Mexico. My cousin picks me up. It was super raining. I remember. It was like a, like the airport seemed like a river, man. It was raining that hard. I'll never forget it. So I land. My cousin picks me up. And he's, like, talking on the phone. He's like, hey, uh, it's Abby. I'm like, oh. What happened to my mom this time? Like, what happened? And I'm just worried. I'm just, what's, what's what am I going to hear? And then I hear my mom laughing and Abby laughing. I'm like, wait. And that's like a big relief. I'm like, okay, yeah. what's going on? Okay, yeah. guys, please tell me. Please just, you, you guys putting me on edge right now. I might have like an anxiety attack or something. <laughs> um. So no, like, hey, WWE called you, this and that, it, for a tryout. And I'm like, oh, stop BSing me, please. Tell me, is everybody okay? Is everybody fine? I'm like, yes, yes, everybody's fine, this and that. I'm okay. Okay, what's going on? Yeah, this person named Karen, this and that. And at the time, um, she was, like, telling me, like, yeah, they called you for a tryout. Like, but I, I left my phone back in Chicago because I'm like, no one's going to call me. So I just left it, you know. I didn't need my phone in Mexico. So, and she puts my phone on, um, on Skype at the time and I'm Skyping. Okay. Let me see. I go, I get to my cousin's house and she puts it on the laptop and I'm like, I'm hearing it and I'm like, Oh my God, it is true. I'm like, what the, it's like, man, okay, wait till I go to Mexico. I need to talk to you. I'm like, All right. So I pick her up. She lands wherever. And now she's with me. Um, it's like, Hey, I'm going to give you my ticket. I'm like, what do you mean? Yeah, are you really serious about this? Do you really want to do this? Because if you're not serious, I'm not. I won't be happy. You know what that means? Because you put all of us through through enough. I'm like, like you really want to do this? And I'm like, you know what? Yeah, I do. I really do. Let's see how far I can go. And she's like, all right. Well, just know this. Every day, we're gonna stay here in Mexico till you till you get good, and then you're gonna go back to the U.S. And you're going to travel the world and you're going to get hired. I'm like, that's impossible. You can't tell me that. I'm like, well, I won't be happy. You know what that means. I'm like, all right. So every single day, oh, my God. I was in Mexico, but she like, all right, there's training. And she looks up. And she's like, hey, there's training here. Go. There's training there. Go. You need to pick a training that you like and go every single day. I'm like, all right. Hey, they have radio here. Go. They're asking. They're telling the people. Who wants to do radio? Who wants to do TV for radio? And some guys like, ah, I don't have time. Like, oh, I'll do it. I'll do it. So I took advantage of all media. I took advantage of all radio, everything, man, everything. Because I was really focused and I was really determined. And I had one goal in mind, just to be in that WWE ring. And 
she stayed in Mexico. So put this, get this in mind, like we had no money. We were living off of wrestling, put it, put it that way. So I go back to Chicago to do my trial. It was in Green Bay, Wisconsin, Chicago, and Indianapolis. It, it stopped. That's uh, where I met you, Fred. I met you, and you had like a spiked up hair. <laughs> yeah, and I saw Heath. Heath, he was like super jacked. I'm like, oh my God, man, I can't believe I'm here. Like, whoa, these guys are jacked. I'm like, man, I got to up my game. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, real, real nice since then, too. Um, I know what else. So, yeah, I did, I did my tryouts. Uh, at the time, they were like, okay, you and you, go. You and you, go. And I, oh, man. It was, it was really, really interesting because to me, I didn't feel nervous until I, I was on that stage and seeing that big WWE sign. And I'm like, whoa, like, it didn't hit me yet. And like, all right, I can be here. Like, I can be here. So that, that was like a big fire that hit me. Right. And I'm like, I'm going to go to Mexico. I'm, I'm going to train. So I started watching ballet. I started watching uh, gymnastics. I started mm -hmm. watching cheerleading just to get ideas. Wow. Because I wanted to be different. I wanted to do stuff that I, that I, I know I can do. Like there's a move, for example, that I did as a kid. I always loved walking on my hands. I don't know why, but I've always loved doing it. And my brother's like, hey, look at you with that spider walk. So it's like <laughs> it's a little spider walk or, you know, whatever. I, I used to call it exorcist walk for some reason. It looks so like it. <laughs> now, I know, right? And so now I added it to my moveset. I'm like, oh, do, 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 back yeah. handspring, head scissors. Whoa, boom. So it's like my own style. So I always try to, like, pop myself. Yeah. I always try to be like, oh, okay, I think I can be stupid like this. Whoa. <laughs> so it's just me being dumb. But people will be like, whoa. So. From there, I started learning from different trainers. And one of my favorite trainers is Grand Apache. He, he passed away a couple years ago. And yeah, he's one of the best trainers because like he taught me how to perfect my craft when I'm flying. So I'll give you one example. When you springboard, a lot of guys springboard and uh, they go their different ways. But when you springboard, you fly, you open yourself, kind of like in gymnastics or ballet when they, when they pose. I got those tips too from Arnold because when he bodybuilds, he took ballet because you have, to, you have to present yourself to, you know, you have right. to like show yourself good. You know, it's, it's just the yeah. way you display yourself in the air. For me, that's how I see it mm -hmm. because it's an art. So I wanted to be artistic. Right. And I wanted to be different. And now, from there, like I got, I went back to the states, and believe it or not, I started traveling. My first match back was at CZW, then the um, Gabe Sapolsky at that time, uh, Dragon Gate. He was there. He saw me. And then I got, he offered me a contract there, and right away I'm like, wait, this is happening too fast. What's going on? This is just practice to me. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. bah, 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 bah. and then everything just started picking up. Then I was with Dragon Gate. I went to WrestleMania in Miami. Uh, I was all the way at the top. <laughs> I'm like, wow, this is so cool. Like, this is really cool. And I, I didn't expect a call back after my three-day tryouts. Uh, then I got another call. I got another call in 2000, I think it was in 2012. In 2012, I got a call and I did my trial at the FCW in Tampa. The FCW, man, I miss it so much. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> oh, so many memories. I didn't think of anything. I just, I'm going to go there and have fun. I, I didn't expect to be hired. I didn't expect anything at all. I'm just going to go in there and have fun. Boom, 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 do my stuff. Boom, 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 boom. And I even did. I, I heard Bill DeMott say something, but I didn't hear what he said. And I said, Lucha, Lucha, Lucha. The guys were like, what the? And, and I popped Bill the mod and everybody was like, wow, that was amazing. I'm like, really? I just, I just couldn't hear you. I'm like, uh, Lu -cha, Lu -cha. <laughs> my promo time. I did two promos on a couple of them. But that was like the one they like. I'm like, oh, OK. So all right, I'm just being mean. I'm like, all right. Um, then after those tryouts, my last tour was in Moscow, Russia. 
Mm. I did, man, it was, it was really cool. And then WWE was there at the same time I was there. I'm like, wow. I heard that you guys uh, never been there. It was a, like the first time, right? So I heard I about that. And it was like, oh, that's cool. So that motivated me more. I'm like, all right. I just kept doing my thing and I was just focused. I, I really didn't think much of it that they were going to hire me. Uh, triple, I did a lot of triple A. Uh, TNA was calling. And then uh, like a lot of shows kept piling up. I'm like, man, like, where, where am I going to go? <laughs> I just want to travel and have fun. Then WWE called me like, Hey, I was working out. And I remember, um, uh, uh, just me having a really cool workout. Actually, I don't know what I was doing. Well, anyways, lost my train of thought. Sorry. <laughs> so yeah. So then they called me, and I'm like, hey. They told me, hey, we're interested. This and that. And I'm, it didn't hit me. And I, I was just on the phone. And I'm like, uh huh. Yeah. Okay. So like, so are you interested or not? Because it doesn't seem like you're interested. I'm like, no. Yeah. I I am interested. Just uh, caught me in the middle of a good workout. But uh, no, I, I think I'm good. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, I'll see you there. And, and I'm like, I'm finishing my workout. I'm like, wait a minute. What the hell just happened? Did I just get signed? <laughs> OMG, I just got signed. And I was like, ah, what the? So I couldn't even wait. Because before that, oh, now I remember. Before that, I was crying in the car. Why? Because we were, we were really close to losing our apartment. My wife got laid off her job. They were laying off people. Her car got stolen. Mm. Um, I was bringing some money to pay for the rent, but not enough to eat. So we were lacking of food and we were just too embarrassed, you know, to like, we don't want to ask or, you know. Yeah. But we, we pulled through and it was just, I was just remembering that. That's why it was kind of hard to digest. Because yeah. I was going through that, I'm like, man, and I'm like, I swear, I swear to God, when in that car before my workout, and I'm like, oh, please God, I just need a miracle. I need, I need you to save my life because I'm going through so much. I swear, and then that's why I'm so like religious. And there are some times, as a person, I forget because of stress and this and that. You just, you know, you forget, and then that's when you come back. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of people that can, you know, relate to that. Absolutely. Because uh, I've done it myself, but it, it was just like a big miracle to me. I'm like, oh my God, when, when, just when we're drowning and we're about this close to hitting rock bottom, something in light came. And I'm just like, wow, I, I couldn't help it. I had to call Abby and, and instead of me driving home, I, I couldn't help it. I just said, hey, yeah. babe. Uh, just get you need to we need you need to pack up because we need to leave in two months. I'm like, why? What's going on? We we have to go to Orlando, Florida now. So we have to live there. I'm like, what? What's going on? I'm like, I just got signed. And then she started oh like, bawling and it's so crazy because I, ne I never would have thought of it. And I'm like, you know what? It's not gonna hit me until I get that contract. Yeah. Um once I got that contract, I didn't even tell my parents. But hey mom, mama, uh, mom and dad. We sat them down and it's like, I got some news for you guys. Uh, I'm gonna step out of Illinois and I'm, I'm gonna pursue my own life and my own dreams. And I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go to Orlando, Florida. And I'm saying I'm getting chills right now, just <laughs> thinking about it again. <laughs> so uh, yeah, like my mom broke down crying because she know deep down that that's always something I've always wanted. Like as a kid, me jumping from the sofas and <laughs> busting my lip because I wanted to fly like Superman and I wanted to be a wrestler. Yeah. So yeah, like everybody, my whole family knew I've, I've loved wrestling and I have no, nobody in my family as a wrestler. I'm the only one. And, I'm, and I have family that love wrestling, but nobody's a wrestler and I'm the first one. And I just wanted to pursue my dream. And I told myself, I always told myself, let me see how far I can go. Yeah. Because I don't stop. Right. And I just keep repeating, like, let me see how far I can go. I don't stop. I don't stop. Wow. And that's something I've always told myself. And I've always, you know, I, I dedicated myself 100% to that. Yeah. I don't stop. Let me keep going. Let me see how far I can go. Let me see how much noise I can make. Right. And 
obviously in life there are some bumps and that you have to overcome mm -hmm. but when you do you just have to keep going and just i don't stop i don't stop let me see what else i can do and that's just something right now that in a way i'm glad that i got injured because it's making me think about all that it's yeah. making me refocus how i started in the first place yeah yeah and in a way it's a blessing too because i'm getting time to spend with abby and to actually clean up my house <laughs> uh, and yeah and, and do this be doing video like doing video just keeping busy right but the rest is history i got hired man and i just wanted to be the best i still want to be the best i i'm not dead yet yeah i want to be you know i'm alive and i want i want to continue to make noise around the world and we still, uh sorry to interrupt fred uh, i was gonna say you already accomplished so much in the wwe you know winning the nxt tag team championships with sin cara not only that yeah. i got so happy when you won the WWE cruiserweight championship because i know that meant a lot to you oh and, my god i was well, like Oh, what got me was the fact that you dedicated that to Eddie Guerrero, because just like everyone else, I'm I'm a huge Eddie Guerrero fan. I don't know if I have it here. With his, I have his autograph, um, like picture. But I'm a big fan of his. And for you, I saw that post interview match and you dedicating that match to Eddie. That that meant a lot, man. What did that mean to you? Well, it changed because Eddie changed my life, man. I watched besides him, me watching him wrestle. Yeah, I watched his life, his documentaries. I really wish I could have met him. I've met a lot of people that met him, that wrestled him, and it's just like man, I just wish I could have met him, pick his brain. And in a way, I kind of felt that vibe through Alberto Del Rio. Yeah, like Latino wise, you know, like he understands this and that. And, um, that's why, in a way, I kind of have like a good connection with Alberto. Yeah, and. But Eddie Guerrero, I was, I was telling him the same thing, like Eddie, just like everything that he's been through, man, it just it changed my life. I wanted to live up to that too. And there's another thing I told myself before coming to WWE. I've never, in the Indies, I've never carried a title. I, I was never, hey, I'm this guy's champion or this guy's champion in whatever company. I told myself, if I'm going to be a champion, if I'm going to hold a title first, it has to be a, a WWE title. And there goes the NXT title. I'm like, wow. I, cr I cried, man. That one too. <laughs> but then again, I want a main roster title. Yes. That was my main goal. And then the U.S. title. I'm like, oh, man. So at the time, that was really special because Alberto took me to a level that like, wow. His aggressiveness, his just quick thinking, kind of taught me that too. And it's just very unique. That's why in a way it reminded me of Eddie because Eddie did the same thing. Yeah. He, just, he did his own thing and, all right, I'll see you out there. I'm like, all right, I'll see you out there. And it's very, um, like I said, very unique. And I just love it. Man, I love it. And you also did something that not a lot of people can say they did. You retained your U.S. championship at WrestleMania. That, that, yeah, wow. That WrestleMania moment. It's a, uh, how do you say? Look, it, it was a 50-50 feel. Okay. Why? Because, first off, the, my, I have an opportunity to oh, man, defend my U.S. title at WrestleMania. Right. Man, I was... Dedicated, uh, man, I, I, I got lean. I was working so hard. I didn't have the gym equipment that now that I have, but I was just working so hard. And that was just my main focus. I just want to steal the show. Uh, we got we got moved to the kickoff, mm -hmm. which upset uh, right back. And obviously, like just everybody, you know, in general, <laughs> it upset me. Too. Yeah. I mean, who, who doesn't want, who, who wants that? But either way, it was fun. It was fun to be there. My very first WrestleMania, I'm like, yes, Abby's going to see me. She's going to be thrilled. Oh, man, I just want her. I want to see her after my match and just <sighs> hug her and, to see, and just cry together. Yeah. I was planning that. But I think 
the fans started coming in late and from there i guess there was a bus that got brought they, they got brought late pretty much and she never made it she mm. never saw me wrestle to have like my wrestlemania moment that's why i keep that video on my twitter which i'll never change until i have my wrestlemania moment i'll change it because that video just describes a little bit of my life and just a little bit of how what we go through because we both work so hard to get where we are you know this to me Calisto, me and abby we're a team you know i see that I, i've been seeing that since day one because mm -hmm. she helps me so much and i help her too and we just a good team but that that that's why I think it, it, it felt really heartbreaking, and more to her because, like, she just couldn't hold back her tears, and she's like, and I'm just telling her, you know what, I'm gonna work really hard to make this happen again because we will have our WrestleMania moment one day, just one day, and I think that's one of my major goals that I'm pushing harder to have our WrestleMania moment, just my wife by my side. And I think that's really, it's something that I've been working all my life, just to have her by my side at WrestleMania. And it's going to happen, man. I feel yeah, it. Yeah, man. I mean, never say never, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Keep working hard. Keep working hard. Lucha, fight, fight, fight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you can see me now here. And <laughs> here I am. Look at this big. Yeah. She surprised me with this, this picture here. It's just mm -hmm. really emotional <laughs> that's how much that's what she, how she feels about me and i feel about her like, yeah oh no but yeah i mean oh, 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 i gotta tell you there's absolutely positively nobody that is more resilient and hardworking like kalisto to the world right. everyone knows Kalisto, but manny's my main man and, and you it's funny you mentioned heath slater uh, earlier it's a yeah. handful of people Seamus, yes. Heath Slater, you, oh, yeah. a, a few other people I still stay in contact with. You guys are my heart and soul and my everything. Oh, man. Same here, bro. Kalisto, I'm, uh, I'm, a, I'm yeah. a, oh, sorry. But, uh, Kalisto, I just want to say I'm a big fan of yours, right? And Thank I just want to say one little thing, one little request. You don't have to take it in. But oh, is there a chance that when you come back, you go back to your look? With your hair showing and you painting your face, because to me that looks so dope. When you when you came out like that, and you had that, that paint, like you look like a superhero, and, and I, that just looked like a, a really dope mask to me. Is it the latex one or yeah. which one did you? Well, the black latex one is super yeah. taped to your face, and you had the black paint and everything. That was a good look, man. Oh man, I have um, uh, I have I have more ideas coming up. Okay, that way. <laughs> I got some more ideas. Uh, <laughs> Tom Savini and his crew, he's a, man, they do an amazing job. They did Bray Wyatt stuff, Triple H's stuff. Um, man, he's just an artistic guy. I went to actually Pittsburgh and I got molded. My whole head got molded. It took, took like three hours or two, something like that. It took a while. I was in that big mud and you know how they do it in the movies. They take it yeah. off and this and that. It was it was really interesting. It felt like in the movie set. It's pretty Mrs. cool. Fire. I mean, she had her mask. Yeah. And then once I saw the final product, I'm like, all right, that's pretty cool. Let me see how it looks once I put it on. And, I, and when I have a new mask, I wear it around the house and I just be like, oh, let, me just, <laughs> let me just get the feel of it. Yeah. To me, to me, and I'm sure some luchadors and anybody who wear a mask can relate. When you put on a mask, don't you just feel different? You feel like you're not the same person. You feel like you can be more than what you really are. Absolutely. It can be anything. Yeah. You know, um, to me, if I feel like I'm a different person when I'm talking to you. So when I take off my mask, I feel like Manny, you're like, hey, come on, stop. You know, like, no, I'm talking to police. You know? <laughs> so yeah, but uh, it's a different vibe and a different feel. So when I put on the mask, it's like, oh, I feel like I can do this. And like, yeah. I just get the vibe. If I put like a tiger mask or something, then I feel more like a tiger. It's kind of like, you know what I mean? Right. It's all depending on how I, how I feel. So it's pretty cool. That's, that's, yeah, that's my story. <laughs> I love it, man. Kalisto, I don't, but, uh, like, um, I don't like ribs or anything, but off the top of your head, what's the, 
what's the biggest rib someone has done to you in wrestling? Oh, I'll tell you right now. Mm. So, me and Team Cara, uh, tag team champions, NXT. I'm excited. I'm like, yeah, I think this is our first defense. I'm excited, this and that. And, um, yeah, we're pumping each other up. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm a, I'm first. I'm like, all right, okay, let me, let, let me, uh, let me go out first. So you can follow behind me. Mm-hmm. He's like, no, nah, let me go out first. Like, nah, dude, like it'll be simple. Like I'm gonna open the close for you, curtain for you. This and that. I'm like, all right, cool. So I'm about to go. I'm like, yeah, yeah. And then, right when I go out, you hear the music, lucha, lucha. And r- right as I go out, Sincara in the back unclips the title. And I'm like, <gasps> and I catch it with my arm, and I'm like, Lucha, Lucha, Lucha. And I'm like, you, you, we're about to do the jump. What the? Oh, and I'm like, yeah, this and that. Boom. And I have it here, and I clip it. I'm like, oh, boom. I'm like, oh, and I catch it again. I do the. Oh my God, it was embarrassing. I'm like, what are you doing? It's TV. I'm like, oh God. But it was. Uh, that's that's something I'll always remember. Always. That's funny, man. Oh, what a river. <laughs> but yeah, he's cool though. <laughs> You're doing an awesome job right now, you know, with your run with the Lucha House Party with Lince Dorado and Hammond. Yeah, they're kicking butt. Yeah, they're and doing real cool. On SmackDown against John Morrison and The Miz. Yeah, oh, I saw that. I just like, man, I wish I could be there. I'm working really hard to come back, but. Oh. Then again, I don't want to come back too soon because yeah. I don't want to tear anything. Yeah. I want to come back at 100%. As you should. But yeah, definitely. And man, when I just see them, I just like, again, I see SmackDown. I see them working. I'm like, it's hard, huh? I want to get yeah. in there. I want to get in there. But yeah, it's, it's, it's a matter of time. Kalisa, I got to say that like uh, all, all, all the work I've been able to do with WWE, uh, you are the only one, I forget what match it was, but you're the only one where like we did like a uh, baby baby opener in the beginning, uh, opening yep. spot where everyone like applauded. I forget what match it was, but that's the only time in the WWE ring that I actually got like an a, a applaud for doing like a standoff. So. Oh, dude, it's an amazing feeling, huh? It's cool. Hell yeah. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad I got to do it with you, man. It's pretty cool. Like that spot, boom, 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 and the, and the people. It's awesome. Oh, so yeah. cool, man. Thank you. I'm just honored. Like I said, when I when I got to WWE, um, you're a familiar face. Everybody's like familiar. I'm like, man, I just want to wrestle everybody. I don't know if you were there when I did that joke. <laughs> there was a there was a meeting. Uh, but we have our meetings and like, all right, who has a joke? I don't know if you were there. Oh, you were there. Okay. They say, who has a joke? I'm like, all right, all right, Calisto, have a joke. I'm like, uh, I'm just here to, I just want to wrestle everybody, man. <laughs> They're like, Whoa, that, 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 that joke. I'm like oh. good times. Good times. I've never, I've never had to say a joke, but that's always my biggest fear when we have like talent meetings. See, yeah. I actually work in front of a crowd. But when you're yeah. in front of your peers, it's a little different. I'm shy in front of my peers. I'm yeah, quiet. Same. So, like, when I had to do that joke thing, like, I would hide. I never had to say a joke. <laughs> thank, thank goodness. Thank oh, goodness. Oh, man. But you know what? That's when Heath saved me. He's like, hey, man, that was a funny joke. And I'm like, oh, he's a cool guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Come on, you, baby. Um, Come on. Yeah. Do you have like a dream opponent uh, or have you wrestled your dream opponent or do you have like a dream opponent uh, before you, uh, you know, reach your journey? Like, is, is there someone? Right now in the company? Yeah, Ray. I haven't, I haven't wrestled Ray. Uh, yes. I haven't been in the ring with him. And Morrison is another one. Yeah. I, have, I can have so much fun with him too. Miz and Morrison are a great duo. They are, man, they're just great at what they do. Yeah. Um, believe it or not, I do want to wrestle Randy Orton. Yes. <laughs> I want to wrestle Randy Orton. And I've always said this to in my interviews. Why not? I want to wrestle Brock Lesnar. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. it's the I'll do my best, but I know he'll kick my butt, but I'll do my best. I beat, I beat Brock. 
Yes. <laughs> yes. I beat Braun. Yes. You know what I mean? The lie story. Anyone will buy that, man. Yeah. So I think it'll be great. You know, there's so many people I want to wrestle, but I, first things first, or maybe last, I, I want to wrestle Ray. Yes. That would be yeah. And they, I do get this question too a lot. Like, do you ever think about taking off your mask? I'm like, you know what? If I'm going to lose my mask, it has to be someone like Ray. Yeah. Or it has to be Ray. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to lose my mask, it has to be Ray. So if in mask versus mask, that'd be, oof, that'd be very interesting. Everyone. Two out of three falls. Man, fall call, false count anywhere. <laughs> Woo. I'm already thinking about it. <laughs> but yeah. Yes. yes. Uh, you know, uh, Kalisto, representation is very important. And, and like, we need more people like you, especially in the LGBTQ community. You're, a great, you're a great ally, bro. So for you, <laughs> how important in, is representation for you and your community and for you being an ally for someone like me? Well, it's very, it's very important, man. Like, I admire everything you're doing, too. Everything that you're doing, the representation. Um, it's just real, real, real awesome because I have family, too, uh, with the LGBT community. There's so many, there's many hashtags, right? Many LGBT. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah cause my, my wife was talking to her cousin, too, and she was telling, like, what are the hashtags? There, there's so many of them. I don't know. <laughs> but it's interesting. It's really I'm learning. Growing I'm learning. Really growing now. Um, it's LGBTQIA+. There's oh, a lot okay. of yeah, there's a lot. Really? Sorry. Sorry, I'm going off of what I'm supposed to talk about. It's because it's interesting. <laughs> Wait, what's Love the that, IA bro. plus for? Huh? <laughs> what's the IA plus for? Oh, uh, damn it, Arnold. You're asking too much. I, I, I know. Forget. <laughs> Let's go back. Let's I'm go learning back myself. Me. I'm learning myself. Right. <laughs> there you go. Well, I mean, like how I compare with you too, because it's very, it's very very important you know there's so many kids right now that need to know this they need to be educated about what's going on around the world and just spreading positivity around the world it to me is very important too because like i said the, the world it's it's hard there are so many especially with what's going on right now and if we unite together we can like michael jackson you know bring peace to the world yeah. So yes. that's I think that's our major goal for everybody that's like us, you know. Yeah. And it's our responsibility to spread that message. Yeah. In a different way, no matter how, but as long as we pre we spread it, that's that's important, and to help others, and to learn yeah. too how to help others. I think oh, that's wow. our major priority for me. Um, like I want to teach kids the importance of uh why you wear a mask or because i get that i get that question asked so many times like why you wear a mask this and that so i'm teaching them so not only i want to teach uh kids and everybody about helping i want to teach them the history and how and why to wear a mask uh everything that i wear and do has a representation and you should have a plan when you when you help and when you do anything um, I don't know if I'm going off top off topic, but uh, oh, it's fine. yeah. So if that explains it, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so yeah. Arno, Arno, I have to tell you that I'm a 36 year old man, and like uh, I get so uh, over the years, I would get so upset when I would see, uh, not in a bad way, but I'd be so jealous when I see posts of Kalisto and Apollo Crews and, uh, you know, you know uh, Kalisto <laughs> hanging with all the uh, fellas and stuff like that and the girls, oh, I'd be so man. jealous because I'm very overprotective of my friends. Like, I want to be there. I want to protect Kalisto. Oh, dude. I get that. Come over anytime, man. <laughs> yeah. I yes. know, right? When this pandemic, it stops. Yeah. No, Kalisto, Fred speaks very highly of you, man. When I first met him. Oh, thank you. First, uh, people that he mentioned as his closest friends on the road was you and Seamus, you know, and he holds you very near and dear to his heart. And Same here. Like we always, and we do, when we do think about Fred too, like we should, we should be a text, right, Fred? Here yes. and there, like, hey man, we were thinking of you and this and that. Man, yeah, because we keep our friends closer, you know? Yeah. yeah. So we just try to, I, I just try to like be around positive people. 
Mm-hmm. And he's one of them. You too, man. Absolutely. Oh, thank you, man. Likewise. Yeah, man. Likewise, bro. Positive people, man. That's all. Even though there's a lot of negativity in the world nowadays, but yeah, one as a person can control that. You know, just stay away from negativity. Yeah. You, you can control your surroundings. You can control mm-hmm. your actions. And, you know, control what you can control. And outside of that, you know, that's, that's not on you. And what I want to control, that WWE title that's in, in the back right there, I want, I want to control wearing that. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. That WWE title that's in the back, that one right there. I love this color. I, I love this more than blue colors, to be honest with you. But yeah, it's, it's, it's going to happen. Unique, right? you, Pretty cool. Yeah. My favorite is the eagle wing, the little one Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart. Oh, classic. yeah. The, the one that, um, the Attitude Era WWF title, I love that one yeah. too. Oh, um, I just want to tell you a selfish story. Um, no, please tell me. Um, so we, t- we talked about Rey Mysterio earlier. And I've been mm-hmm. a wrestling fan since I was four years old. I'm, 30, I'm 33 now. Uh, oh, same as me. I'm 33 <laughs> age. We grew up, we, 86, right? <laughs> yep, 86. Yeah, so um, my dad, he used to own a rim manufacturing company. And mm-hmm. wrestlers would get rims for my dad. Um, Eddie Guerrero, Chavo Guerrero. And Ray Mysterio would come to the warehouse to get rims for my dad. And I was in high school at the time. And mm-hmm. I skipped school because uh, I wanted to meet Chavo and Eddie and Ray. I, I never had the chance to meet Eddie. I wasn't there when Eddie came to the warehouse, but uh, I got the chance to meet Ray and Chavo. And, uh, you know, they were super nice to me. I, I took pictures with the Cruiserweight Championship. Oh, that's cool. Cruiserweight Championship. There's a picture of cool. Chavo putting it on me. And mm-hmm. I also met Ray, and uh, he gave me his mask, like autographed everything. And there's uh, a picture of me. Take uh, I don't know if it's here, but anyways, there's a picture of me and Ray when I was 16 years old. And Fred mm-hmm. took me to the Ron Baker store where I actually met you in person. And mm-hmm. uh, on the way out, um, Ray was coming out, and Fred actually stopped him, and uh, he's like, "Hey, Ray." Um, uh, Arnold actually met you when he was 16 years old. You got rings from his dad. And the, he still remembered. He's like, oh, my God, that's right. Like, like blah, blah, blah. And we were able to chop it up. Like, how's your dad doing and all that? And I thought that was pretty cool. But wow. to, to say, like, in general, that day at Bakersfield, when I got to meet you, um, mm-hmm. I actually met Vince McMahon and shook his hand. Nice. You know, you know how as you, you grew up as a wrestling fan, too, but just – I was just a little kid at a candy store, man. That, that, that was just such an epic, epic day for me. And like Fred made that happen. And it's a whole day. I, I tried my best to keep it like calm, cool, and collected in my studies, But mm. I was like, what the hell is going on, man? <laughs> oh, that is so cool, man. Yeah, Fred's a good guy, man. Like I said. Uh... And, and, and don't forget, Kalisto, we don't have to get into it. You know, I always have your back until I'm six feet under because We've had some crazy times on the road, and you know I'm number one. Uh, I'm number one, damn it. Yes, you are number one, numero uno, man. Definitely, yeah. Always, right? Yeah, exactly, brother. All day, every day. Ooh, All you day, know, every day, man. Every day. You know, I, you know, I know time is money, man, but I really, really appreciate you joining us on Pro and Bro Wrestling. Arnold, do you have anything else for my main man, Kalisto? I just want to thank you for your time, man. I know uh, thank I you. that time is valuable. Today's a Sunday fun day. You know, the fact that you're taking time out from your wife to talk with us. We're super great. Oh, it's all good, that. man. And it's all uh, good. best of luck to you and your wife's uh, endeavors. All that, you know, the, your new business that I'm sure we're going to talk more about. And yeah. you and you, man, keep, keep coming out with content. Keep pushing out videos on your Lucha um, like, you know, your, your family, yeah, definitely. Family. I'm, I'm one of your subscribers, like I mentioned earlier. Uh-huh, thank you, man. I'm rooting for you, bro. I'm rooting for you, and I can't wait till you come back to WWE and do your thing. I can't wait either. I can't wait either. Uh, my main focus is just to be on top, man. Yeah. <laughs> be on top just, uh, do my best. Get healthy. Get healthy. First and foremost, yes. get healthy, brother. Definitely, get healthy. Yes. Definitely, yes. Definitely. Thank you. See, man, that's why I love you, Fred. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, Kalisto. Well, handle your business, man. Uh, hopefully, we can do this again. Uh, but yes, thank you. definitely. But, but definitely for uh, thank you for taking the time to share your story, bro. I love you. Anytime, man. I got lots of stories, so please <laughs> bother me. <laughs> yeah, it's a pleasure. Yeah. So thank you, man. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Uh, give my love to Abby too. 
I will. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed that interview, make sure you guys subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you're listening to us on iTunes, make sure you guys give us a five-star rating if you like what you hear and write us a review so we know what we can do better. Awesome, awesome episode with my main man, Kalisto. Episode 45 is in the can, baby. Block the hate, salute the great.